tell me what happened. So I was coming down like that lady, yeah. coming down on my bike, and I saw the guy put his foot and like climb over. I was coming this way. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. My phone, the battery died. And I, I saw the guy throw his leg over and it, yeah, it just was like, oh no. I've heard this happen, but to actually see it happen was, was crazy. When I first came downtown, I noticed that we were going to the high-level bridge an awful lot. Maybe once, almost maybe twice a week for people who were either contemplating suicide or who had actually jumped off and suicided. So keeping track of the numbers of, of the people that have jumped off this bridge and have actually lived or died is very difficult. And the reason that it's very difficult is because it's over a river. So if someone does jump, they don't usually stay where they land. They end up down the river. So what happens with those those incidences is they can't classify, they can classify it potentially as a suicide, but they can't say necessarily where it came from. Oh, when, when I was hanging over the edge with the guy, I was scared shitless. Being over the edge, yeah. like this, yeah. was... was terrifying, huh? Terrifying for me. But the fear I had, I was like, okay, I'm like this. If yeah. he decides to go, is he gonna pull me with them? we know about suicide is that it is it is actually more common than things like traffic accidents and deaths by traffic accidents in Alberta and in fact across Canada. Last year there was something like 500 deaths by suicide in Alberta and about a third of those were in the Edmonton area. It's a problem that's often not spoken about. It's not reported in the media, it's not something that is known except to the families that experience it and you're not going to go very far um, without finding someone who's been touched by someone's suicide in the city. We th think that people will choose to jump from a place like the High Level Bridge, partly because it's there, it's known, it's part of the culture. Perhaps some people sort of romanticize it. Uh, it seems a strange thing to romanticize, but uh, perhaps in that sort of strange way of thinking that people get caught up in when they, when they feel that they have no no alternatives. I can understand why she was drawn to it and like I feel like people knowing her understand why she was drawn to it. Like our first kiss was right below the high level bridge and we talked a lot about the bridge and we talked a lot about people who had jumped off of it and I think it like allowed me to accept it a lot quicker that that was what she did because I knew that that was where she was heading. I can't ignore the bridge after this. And that's what I politely told City Council is, you know, I, I'm surprised that no one has stood up on this issue before, but I am standing up on this issue now and I will, I will not sit down until it's uh, addressed. We've literally spanned the globe for expert opinion and, and best practice and, and what, what's happening in other, uh, in other municipalities facing similar issues. Barriers, there's no question that barriers has kind of been front and center in, in the discourse. The intent of the barriers is really to cause a moment of reconsideration or a moment, uh, moment of pause. And if some way we can interrupt that impulse that maybe, maybe there's some people who, who wouldn't die by suicide. So, so did you say anything to like what did you what did you tell him? Maybe? The guy wouldn't talk. Yeah. Like the, the, I got there, I said it's not that bad. It's like and he said something along the lines of it's not a good day. Yeah. And that's the only thing he said the whole time. 
and, and the one wish I had is that I could have asked someone, grab a phone that's right there, yeah. haul it over so I can talk to someone yeah. who can help me talk this guy over. Here at the Support Network, we um, do have a 24-7 distress line. We've been operating it since 1975. People that are highly suicidal often will have a, a, a time of ambivalence, so there's a time of um, not knowing whether they want to connect with living or connect with death, and we work with them to help them connect back to living. We often get people calling us back and saying, you know what, you helped me today. You saved my life. The reason we don't talk about suicide is the stigma. When somebody loses someone to suicide, they feel very guilty and they perceive that other people are blaming them. We, we, we wonder those things, like what happened in this family that this or this workplace or whatever that someone decided to die by suicide. The, the, the stigma around it is just like unreal and like it's incredibly lonely. There is this almost conspiracy of silence and I think that that can't help any community. Because remember I was there what 45 minutes an yeah. hour talking to him and then the cops got there five minutes later he was over. They've got skill. Yeah. They, they've got skill. They know what they're doing. They do their job, they do it well. Yeah. You know, but the thing is, they're not here yeah. when somebody's going over. And so that's part of the pressure, is how do I find the place in their life right now that we can hear life speaking rather than death speaking? It's really, ultimately, it's a lot about talking. Best hope is that this can be an opening for other people because there's lots of people who are struggling and lots of people like Louise. Like those are the people that we're gonna lose if we don't talk about it. it. Sounds courageous to go up there and you're doing a big thing on the high level bridge, but it's more courageous to do it in somewhere private and talk to a person who there is a real tie to. And the best thing we can do is reach out to someone and say, I'm really worried about you. I'm really concerned. This is what I'm observing. This is what I'm noticing about you. And ask them, are you thinking about suicide? Are you thinking about killing yourself? That is a very scary question to ask. And people um, are terrified to ask it. But it's what people want people to if someone is suicidal, that's what they want you to do. They want you to ask them because it's too scary to admit it.